Good morning. Our God is a God who saves. Amen? Say it together. Our God is a God who saves. Will you stand with us? I want to start out with a word of prayer. Oh God, we thank you that you are a God who saves. We thank you that when we come to you and see ourselves the way you see us, repent of all those things and those ways that have turned us away from you. You save us. You forgive us and you bring us into your family, Lord. And we're here to just worship you and say thank you. I was buried beneath. Come on, sing along. My shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my doom. Till I met you. I was praying. saved us. You rescued us. We were dead in our sin, but you brought us to life.
from Isaiah 49. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exalt, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have compassion on his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. And he says to them, can a woman forget her nursing child? That she should have no compassion on the son of her womb? And even these may forget. Yet I will not forget you. I will not forget you. Behold, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, the faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven that you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart know when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to
Lord, you're so good. You're so faithful. You're so true.
that no matter what we're walking through, wherever we are, whatever happens in this life, no matter our circumstances, we can trust you. When we turn to you, you are just not that hard to find, oh God. You're right here. God, we thank you and we worship you today. Lifting our voices, lifting our hands, lifting our praise and our hearts to you. And now giving you from our hearts, Lord, from what you've given us. We, we're so thankful for how you provide day to day, week, th- week to week, month to month. You give us what we need, Lord. And you've given us so much more than we need, Lord, sometimes. So we give to you to acknowledge who you are. We give our offerings and our tithes now. Use them for your good, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and the ushers can come forward. This is 576 if you want to join. When peace like a river
些短期来借来给你定期工钱。Well, good morning. Welcome to Birds of the Air q and Show. I'm your host, Benny Wingman. I hope you enjoyed our little video clip about these amazing birds. Today, we're here to interview two distinguished bald eagles. Our guests are Charlie Whitefeather and Chester Highflyer. Could we give them all a warm welcome? Please give them a round of applause, if you would. Very nice. Nice to meet you. Uh, not sure if I remember which one's which, but anyway, I think you'll figure it out. All right, so let's begin our Q&As. Either one or both of you may answer. My first question, when and how did the bald eagle become the national symbol of the United States? Well, the Second Continental Congress selected the bald eagle as the US national symbol on June 20th, 1782, and it has been the national bird since then. At that time, it was placed with outspread wings on the great seal of our country, making it the most pictured bird in all America. Hmm, where else can we find the eagle symbol? Oh, on logos for federal agencies, postage stamps, billions and billions of dollar bills, and on the reverse side of many US coins, notably the silver dollar, the half dollar, and the quarter dollar. Hmm, and what do eagles symbolize? Well, bald eagles have been known as symbols of power, courage, and immortality since ancient times. And may I just add a side note, that Benjamin Franklin wasn't too happy that the bald eagle was chosen. He wanted the turkey instead. <laughs> I mean, seriously, a turkey? Ha, can you just imagine the picture of a turkey on our flag, dollar bills, uh, or coins? But I must say, the Philadelphia turkeys has a pretty good ring to it. Hmm. Uh, well, it is hard to imagine a turkey as our national symbol. <laughs> the bird that many of us make the centerpiece of Thanksgiving meals. I mean, you colonials, anyway. Um, well, moving on, next question. How many species of eagles are there? Well, there's actually more than 50 species of eagles, which all belong to the hawk family. Well, why are you called bald eagles? I mean, personally, I'd hate to be bald. Uh, so, sorry about that, Benny. Um, well, we were once called white-headed eagles, but later named bald because of our white feathered head. The rest of our plumage is brown, except, of course, for our white tails. Well, how long do bald eagles live? Well, in the wild, eagles can live 20 to 30 years. However, in captivity, not that I'm a big fan, we can live up to 50 years. Hmm, that's a long time for a bird to live. What are your eating habits? Well, our diet consists of small animals <clears throat> such as fish, rodents, birds, snakes, <laughs> the occasional monkey, uh, <laughs> and rabbits. We have very keen eyesight, and we hunt while soaring high in the air or watching from a high perch. We swoop down at great speed and use our powerful talons to catch and eat our prey. Wow, and what is the size of the bald eagles. Our wingspan is seven feet, six feet, seven inches. No, 
six feet to seven feet six inches. Oh, yes. Sometimes our eyesight starts to go as we get older. Oh. Um, so you're one of the older ones being yeah, held in captivity. Well, and our, and our oh. length is two feet four inches to three feet two inches if you're getting a tape measure and actually measuring. Oh. And well, we weigh about six to 14 pounds. <laughs> with that size, wings burn. How large are your nests? Oh, our nests. Well, we build some of the largest nests of any bird. Our nests, called Aries, or Eries, if you prefer, are typically built in the tallest of trees in forested areas or on a rocky ledge, but always near, always near open water. And our nests are up to eight feet across and weigh almost two tons. One nest in Florida was recorded to be 22 feet deep because most pairs add sticks to the same nest each year and use them for many years. I'm going to read a quote to you. Isaiah 40, 31 tells us, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. What are your thoughts about that scripture reference? Ah, uh, yes, Benny. Um... Our creature God made us unlike other birds. When storm clouds gather, we get excited because we use the storm's wind to lift ourselves higher, far above the clouds, so we can soar and not grow weary. Because of our large, heavy wings, we need to save energy by soaring instead of flapping our wings and patiently trust in and wait for wind thermals. Well, well what are wind thermals? <laughs> Didn't know till today, but a wind thermal is a big gust of wind that will rise up from the atmosphere. Sometimes we'll remain perched for days waiting for a good strong wind thermal and launch onto it to combine it with a mixture of flying and soaring on that strong wind to get us to where we want to go. It's our power from God. You know, as Christians, you are like the eagle. Your wings are your faith and belief in the Lord. And the wind thermals are the presence and power of the Holy Spirit flowing and operating through you so you can fully accomplish your divine destiny for the Lord. Just as we depend on these strong wind thermals to take us to heights that no other bird can fly to, in the same way you can be taken to heights that you may never have dreamed possible as you learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. True words. Thank you, both of you, for your information and words of wisdom. Well, our time is almost up. Any last facts about yourselves that you would like to share with us before we sign off? Oh, there are so many more. However, a very fascinating quality about us is that we have two sets of eyes. The first set is the natural eye, which we have when we are in a resting mode. And however, when we start to take flight on these strong wind thermals, we have a second eye that comes in on us. This second eye enables us to fly on these strong wind thermals and help us to navigate through heavy storm clouds. Uh, I have three sets, actually, now. <laughs> well, with no need to show off. <laughs> As Christians, you also have two sets of eyes operating. The first set is your normal natural eye that you use to see the natural world. However, you also have a second set of eyes, and that is the eye, are the eyes of the Holy Spirit. So that you can see and understand scripture and how to apply its truth to your life. Well, thank you for sharing that. Your eagles sure have a lot to teach us. Well, that's all we have time for today. So until next time, trust in the Lord and soar high on eagle's wings. This is Benny Wingman signing off for Birds of the Air Q&As. So have you guys ever heard of the Philadelphia eagles? Is that one of the breeds you ever see? Well, uh, this wasn't in the contract. <laughs> That really wasn't the end, but... Yes, but apparently uh, <laughs> Benny's got a, well, somewhere to go. Well, there was supposed to be, you know. Uh, I hear that they have this competition on field where they, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are two spots ahead on their field of contest and uh, some other team of 
cowboys or something like that. Yes, well, those cowboys should what stick. They should stick to mending fences and not oh. football. Well, but don't they looking for home nest advantage? I don't even understand what that means, nor do I really care. Um, hmm. But I guess the eagles are still soaring, so I hear. Well, I also understand there's this other type of creature on the field of contest. They resemble what they call a zebra dove. They have these black and white stripes on them, and they, they can be the most docile and apathetic creatures, and yet they'll attack viciously, either one, at any time, without causal provocation, With greatly the, influencing the outcome. And they have whistles. Oh, yeah. I think so, yeah. They have this very strange whistle sound. And like graduated lowest in their class. Well, maybe. Yes. I don't know about that. Is that what you find out? And, and yeah. they are ah, quite yes, unnatural yes. predators. Yeah. Yes. You, you colonials have the strangest games. Anyway. Yeah. very happy to have these ready to go and spread out to whatever places in the world they're taking us. And Maggie would like to pray for the children who will be receiving them, well, and the children who will be receiving them. Go ahead, Maggie. Dear Heavenly Father, we are gathered here today to worship you. On Friday, we packed these boxes to send the children for Christmas. Please use these boxes to help children learn about you. We also ask that you use these boxes to bring joy to other kids. Thank you for the opportunity to help bring joy to the kids and help them learn about you. The whole world should know you, and we are working to do that one step at a time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Maggie. A couple of housekeeping things before I get rolling here this morning. Um, You've been noticing the QR codes that have been up on the slides. There are two that are associated with the Birds of the Air series. One has a bird with wings outstretched, and that one will get you all the devotional cards that we've used throughout the series. And this one, with just the eagle's head, would get you uh, the devotional card for eagles. This is the last message of the series. And um, so if, if you want those, then then there they are. So uh, you can scan those and have them. Uh, another housekeeping thing, after the service, we'll be have, or after, the, after Sunday school, we'll be having a congregational meeting and a meal. So any help that we can get setting up the sanctuary for that would be appreciated. And again, thank you to Joy Mertz. She's not here today, not feeling well, but thank you to Joy Mertz for putting these skits together. They, they have... Go, if, she's, if she's online, she'll hear that. A couple of months ago, Dawn might remember, we were sitting in the car riding. She drives pretty much wherever we go. And a thought struck me. And I pulled out my phone and opened up our note app and began typing. Now, if you've ever typed on a phone, you know that's not necessarily the most efficient way to type. Um, of course, the children are going to go into their own service. Now, one other housekeeping thing before they go, as they go, that is. Uh, children, as you go, please pause in the lobby. Those origami birds out there have got to go somewhere, and we'd like you to have some of them. So there's going to be somebody there to give you an origami bird. There will be way more than we will give to the children, and we don't want to have them at our house. So after the service, please feel free to take an origami bird. There's a hundred of them out there, so not everybody can have one, but we wanted to make sure the children got them. So, so in the car, I started typing away using my thumbs, and it's not the most efficient way to type, of course, but... 
But the thought struck me for the eagle message that was different from other styles of message. As you read the scriptures, and many of the scriptures that are associated with eagles are taken from poetic books, Psalms, Proverbs, Isaiah, Micah, Job. And it's in that spirit that I wanted to present the message to you this morning. Have you ever been tired? Bone tired, dead tired, dog tired, done in, played out, wiped out, wrung out, burned out, beat, asleep on your feet, just plain drained, feeling the strain. In the words of Kipling, filling the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, little time for actual fun, because you work hard, play hard, unless you're too wired to sleep, sleep hard, candle charred at either end, your day has only so many hours. Pressing all our power, get up early, stay up late, multitask until we crash. Then think the time we shove toward the ones we love, if not high in quantity, can at least be high in quality, even if we're low on energy, as if. Who are we kidding? Skidding out of the all-important control because we know it's up to us. Got to get ahead. Sleep when we're dead. On the other hand, be still, we're told, and know that I am God. And sometimes we try, but in our eye, every mote of stillness costs a millisecond of progress and so we regress, so we guess, and rest more restless than exhaustion costs. We count the loss in ticking minutes rather than abundant life. And the obvious question raised, how long? How long be still? How long to wait? Great God, the children of Israel, only a lifetime past the splitting of the sea, are reminded He has His gaze on them. And watching knows the end from the beginning. He sees them in their days to come, merely two lifetimes away, begin to stray away from Him and warns them then this will not stand. If they persist, He'll send their enemies on eagles' wings to shake and wake them to his jealous ownership. God's discipline comes before a strong wind on powerful wings to bring his reminder of their dependence on him. The eagle then is their foe, and who can take it in? How one strong thing could be enemy and friend. It's inscrutable as a silent, sunning snake, a ship, a wash at sea, a love smitten, aging fool. And high the raptor rises like an easy breeze outpacing a gale to sail above the streams, above the rooftops, above the trees, the hills, the snow-capped peaks, the clouds, in patient rings, his songs like screams resounding in the rising rocks, time unnoticed where no watch measures minutes. The only watch that matters is what he watches. In his unblinking gaze, he stays aloft on feathers, beating his wings in measured strokes that stoke his easy speed. He watches and waits. How long? Good God, how long? As long as it takes. 
From his height, his piercing sight, scanning brush and lush meadow for a moving shadow, distinguishing stone from prey, then dropping like the flaming hail, assails his witless mark with surgical precision, or high on a rock or tree, he perches on his perch to seek his purchase on a perch that piques his appetite until the perfect moment. Then he dives and plucks it, all unknowing from the flow, like ripened fruit. And so he knows God will provide and flies and spies or stands awake and waits as long as it takes. By God's own word, the eagle can be either foe or friend. In our rebellion, mark an end to freedom, ravaged in our hearts, maybe in our prideful starts and finishes, with God arranging the board against us in our sin, fouled and foiled, losing money, losing time, losing love, losing ground. The reason lay beneath the workings of our days and our own stunted sight, unlinked to spirit or sin or right, and all the while God shouts for our attention in our tension over unexplained losses, even when we seek to keep in our own coffers riches the world offers. Instead of holy, lofty flight, we grasp and sweat like sheep, We bleat at hunter's shadows to grow wealth that costs our spiritual health. Wealth then, like an eagle, speeds away. On stormy Chiracos leaves us both spirits and pockets in poverty. But for us to know that though the eagle could be our foe, God's hand of woe, the eagle could instead be a friend a lift. It could be we ourselves, raised to the clouds and power, to holy realm, the heavens where God is patient, omniscient, aware of when we'll come or if we'll stay away, of when we want Him or prefer our whims. We could soar above the land, the trees, and see above the hills, the snow caps, the clouds, because with God, a day is like a thousand years, a thousand years a day, dealing in moments and eternity just the same, in one ineffable, infinite now, where steadily he binds his threads, weaving his timeless tapestry that only he can clearly see, with endless patience, no stitches dropped, no extra loop endured, no image marred in his pattern. How long? O Lord, how long? We wait for Thee. O Lord, as watchmen watch the dark horizon for the rising of the sun, for the rising of the sun. And Moses waited 40 years, but Jesus and Elijah only 40 days. And Saul of Tarsus waited three years, but Jonah just as many days. And Gideon and Balaam merely overnight, though Gideon chose to wait a second. How long is never reckoned as a standard, but is measured man by fallen man, restored not by a formula, but by God's love. His attention burns whatever concerns him, person by sin, encrusted person. And thus the answer to the song's refrain, how long, as long as it takes. And yet we're wearing down. Fatigued by prolonged exposure to the strong forces faced and needing grace. How long for us? The clock is ticking. The calendar is flipping through the days or weeks or months or years. How long, O Lord? Our lives are short. Our days are snatched away. Like eagles pray, they wax and wane. But He has done it. God has been the eagle. 
Not only in power of rising high, but searching and finding, hovering over, shading, protecting in love and power, intense desire, and lifting His people on His own wing to heights unseen, cherishing and guiding. So I must ask myself, can I wait? Can I push back against the shove of time-bound urgency and wait against the pressing, earth-bound stressing of flesh and things that overtake my mind and heart and not merely to wait, but wait on God? To wait and pray, or as Jesus says, to watch and pray and stay extended moments in His presence. Pull away from my own way to find His mastery, His help, His forgiveness, friendship, fatherhood, His immensity. Drawing my gaze upward like an eagle on a zephyr, content to rest on winds that lift us to a bigger context, a higher place beyond the bounds of space and time and crumbling, elapsing, clockwork-driven, calendar-ridden, temporary demands can I talk with God truly talk converse listen as well as speak confess for sure bear my heart but not merely ask but seek and knock and remember who is on the other side to give when I ask to reveal when I seek to open when I knock Expecting someone to actually be on the other side of the exchange. Arranging all existence to make things right and good function as they should, not to my taste, but to my need and everyone's need to speed the world on its way. Oh, to be not only lifted, but exalted like the eagle. Like him, I'm unclean, but still used by God for whatever purposes he deems. As at the end of time, the eagle screams his woes to those still on earth after the first four trumpets, shouts a warning of three more coming. That eagle's purpose is dark, but still the task in God's holy presence. Or better still, the man the lion, the ox, and the eagle, faces of the living four whose place it is to fly before God's throne and day and night sing holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, which wert and art and evermore shall be, And what a place to wait, to fly and worship, to sing God's being and ever just to be in his presence and look on his face. Is that what it means to wait? And then renewing strength to rise on wings like an eagle. Isaiah's word offered to beleaguered people, harassed and fearful, wearing themselves out on gods that are not gods, but chunks of silver or wood, unspeaking, unhearing, unheeding, as out of desperation, supplications placed before them went unanswered. Their neighbors did it. It seemed only normal. And so they prayed to gods they'd made. What an awful mistake like beating their heads on tables. But God, the true God, eternal and strong, arranges the heavens star by star and gives them names who waits for us with such infinite patience 
He's always been, always will be. He's never tired. He's never weary. And gives that same life freely to all who wait on Him. Even kids who run with energy enough to power the sun, they'll wind down. Even they get tired. No surprise that we get tired. Bone tired. Dead tired, dog tired, done in, played out, wiped out, burned out, wrung out, beat, asleep on our feet, just plain drained, feeling the strain. But just you wait. Wait. Wait and watch and pray and wait and stay in the presence of the eternal God. He will raise you up like eagles above the rooftops, above the trees, above the hills, above the snow-capped peaks, above the clouds to heights of renewed strength, above fatigue, above this dusty, beleaguered life to a different life, abundant life, eternal life that doesn't end beginning now. Like other birds, the eagle is not right or wrong. It's strong and fast and big, unclean to eat, and yet his face looks at God's throne sings His holiness and eternal tones. And He obeys His Master. And like His Master embodies power, power to fly, to stay aloft, power to wait, power to rise. O Lord, we wait for Thee. As watchmen wait for the rising sun. As watchmen wait for the rising sun. O God, teach us what it means to be silent in Your presence, to wait for You and pray and listen. Because this world is a difficult place. Our relationships, our work, our classes, even our leisure activities are fraught with tension. And our world is fraught with even bigger tension. We pray for the families in Maine who have lost someone, those who are still recovering from their injuries after the shooting. We pray for the people of the Ukraine. And the conflict that they are facing. We pray for the people of Israel. We ask for the safety of all who are in harm's way. We ask that your will would be done in each of these circumstances. And we ask for peace. Father, how can we rise above these things? How can we soar above the storm? except to wait on you. And so we wait. Even 
And so, come Lord Jesus. Come in your physical presence, certainly, we ask for your return. But even just in this moment, come and may we live in the stillness of your presence, knowing that you are not surprised, you are not dismayed. Everything is in your hand. And we would place ourselves there as well. In Jesus' name. spend some more time praying, meditating singing to him thanking him for his love for his goodness, for his faithfulness i 
Lord, as we go, we remember your goodness. We remember your faithfulness. Lord, and as we seek to know you more and more and more, those words of the psalmist just resound in our hearts that when we know your name, 
We trust in you, oh God, because you have never forsaken those who seek you. God, we love you. We wait for you. Thank you. We're creation suddenly articulate with a thousand tongues to live.
go and reflect Him, go and magnify Him this week. You're dismissed.